Welcome back to the Rebel Web Show. We are a once a week broadcast from Manchester, New Hampshire, where we are pro pot, pro gun, and pro coffee. You can find all of our contents on aloren.fm and, of course, on uh, rebelloveshow.com, Facebook. Uh, also, go like us and download us on Stitcher and iTunes. I'm Rob Mathias. And I'm Shire Dude. And our guest today are uh, we have uh, who should we introduce? We'll, we'll, we'll introduce MVG <laughs> first. Uh, MVG. Uh, He's you, our serial guest. Our serial guest. Yeah, it was this number? Uh, it's got to be four or five. I've lost count at this point. Yeah. Shire, did you said it was five earlier? I believe it's five. I don't think so. I think it's four. I think it's four as well. But it's it, five it's in my heart. Probably. In well, my at five, <laughs> see, here's the thing. At five, <laughs> at five, we have to get you a a, a mug. Is that, tr- is I that think right? We're gonna make. We're gonna do a thing. Yeah, where we get like a, a we get him a mug. And then we get him a shirt and like a beanie and then like a. Yeah. <laughs> Well, he, one of those tell, hats that would like that. He's already a high priestess of the Shire Dew Church. <laughs> tell, tell me when the prizes become denominated in thousands of tickets, and I'll be interested. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and uh, we have uh, Bruno Parga. You are uh, from Brazil, correct? Yes. All right, you're you're a new mover to the Shire. You've been yep. here. How how long have you been here? Like three weeks now. Three weeks. That's that's, that's flown like, by, man. Yeah, that's about like, beginning of March, end of February. That's a yeah, few Shire months right there. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, let's uh, let's open up with uh, your move here because you're right. we're getting a perspective from uh, from you for the begin with. You're uh, you're moving here to the Shire. You're coming from South America. Uh, how are you handling the cold? Oh, I I knew it would be cold, colder than I was used to. Much colder than I was used to. No snow or anything in Brazil. But I had I had traveled to Peru once, and they have like snow and everything up there. So. I, I knew the basics, like dress up in layers and everything. So, uh, I don't know. I'm here. I've survived. <laughs> it's not that bad. You can always no. put on more clothes. Yeah. Turn on the heat. Yeah. Hashtag anyway. buy a jacket. Yeah. Yeah. There's basically <laughs> modern day technology known as heaters. Yeah. They're in houses. <laughs> they're in cars. You can put clothes on. It's not, it's not that difficult. And we don't have them in Brazil. We don't use heaters. Even like there's some days that are cold. And uh-huh. we say there that we suffer from cold more than you guys here. Because there, there are no heaters, and when it gets cold, we suffer indoors. Oh wow! Whoa. Yeah. Interesting. That's the downside. I never thought of it that way. Yeah, that's fascinating. How did you discover uh, the FSB? Well, it was online. Uh, it should. It was probably like two years ago, like February 20, 2013 or something like that. And I was just searching libertarian websites. I, I was already a libertarian. I had just uh, became become an anarchist. In December 2012. How long did that take? How long between libertarian and anarchist? I really don't months? know because, like, uh, anarchist, I know it was December 2012, but libertarian, I don't have like a, a date. It was like more uh, like a process. Yeah. Okay. And I don't know. I really don't know. And, and I was working for the government during the, that part. So what? Well, oh, that man. must have been very difficult. <laughs> Who brought a Fed to the show? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How did you know it was federal? Yeah, it was federal. Yeah. Really? Uh, yeah. Can you tell us about that at all? Or I uh, used to be a diplomat. Oh wow! Yeah, really so fancy, uh, special passport and everything, and I hated it. I loathed it. Yeah. <sighs> and there are guys over there that they insist that you stand up because they entered the room because they're hierarchically superior. Oh man! <laughs> Come on! We have those people too. <laughs> yeah, that, that's a that's a normal status uh, viewpoint. Yeah, even here, mandatory yeah. respect. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. if yeah. some man walks into a room wearing a robe, you're supposed to stand for him for some reason. I, I honestly don't understand why, but that, it's that, to that's stop you here. from laughing. Oh, he's wearing a robe. <laughs> <laughs> so, alternative treatment. <laughs> yeah. So you discovered the FSP online. Yeah. Just like, was it like in a Facebook post or was it like a YouTube video, a podcast? Like, how, it was, how did you really discover it? It was probably like a, a link to the. The FSP uh, webpage from uh, Reddit, probably. I, oh wow! I discovered Reddit uh, after leaving the the public service in late 2012, and I started reading libertarian stuff and cap stuff. And one one of the things I discovered was the FSP. So uh, first time I saw that, I th- I thought, oh, I might go there someday. But it was like it's a huge move, of course. I think it was in the back burner for for a long time. But then I, I was robbed last year. I was, I was just like taking a look at my cell phone. I, was, I think I was try, trying to learn Chinese, so I was looking at uh, characters and everything. I was distracted. Mm-hmm. 
And inside the subway station, this guy, it, all of a sudden, he pops up. Two guys appear out of the blue. Oh, man. One of them pointing a gun at me. So they, they took my cell phone and my, my wallet. I recovered my wallet afterwards. They do that. Like, they threw it in front of a building nearby. They gave me back. They, they found my documents there and gave me the wallet back. But that day, I, I, I decided to take off the, the back burner, put in the front burner, the, the project of moving here. Hmm. Do you think like... Oh, and this was like uh, 11.30 a.m. on Ooh. a weekday, like <laughs> Monday. So in a central area of That's the city. That's crazy, man. Like yeah. right out in the open. Did, like, you, a lot live, of did you live in like a bad area? Or? No, it's like it's a central location. It's like, Is that just Sao Paulo? Yeah, just Sao Paulo. I, I know it's similar in, in Athens in Greece. It's very dangerous. A lot of pickpockets. Um, I know it's, it's similar in places like Buenos Aires. It's similar in Chicago, too. <laughs> <laughs> well, in, in terms of, I know in terms of, of murder rate, Sao Paulo is the safest big city in Brazil. Uh -huh. And that's the safest, the one I was robbed in. So <laughs> hmm. imagine the most dangerous ones. I don't know. So you have this crazy, like, near-death experience, like, guy's got a gun. I mean, that's, that's pretty freaky. Um, do you think that, like, kind of helped put things into perspective? Like, yeah. A lot of people, I find, I find a lot of people like, like that come to the FSP. Like they have these crazy, terrible experiences, like a really bad breakup or they get robbed or something and they end up here. And yeah, and, and the fact that, the, that I was defenseless and they knew I was defenseless because Brazil is technically unarmed. There was like a 2003 law that says you, you, basically you cannot have a gun. Civilians cannot have a gun. They, you can, but it's very difficult. You have to pass through numerous bureaucratic procedures. Mm -hmm. There was even a referendum to completely uh, outlaw it, but it failed. Uh, people decided to, it, it should be kept legal to sell, even with restrictions. And then the government sort of ignores it anyway. Uh, Sounds like US. Yeah, no, I, I don't know. I think it's, it's worse. We don't have a second amendment there. We I'm like there sure. is a second I'm amendment not sure that here. does a lot of good. Yeah, I the think second amendment didn't ink on really paper. Much do. I mean, it's just it's an idea. It's a spirit. It gets people riled up. It's you know it motivates people to defend what are natural I, rights. Yeah, I mean, well, first off, every single gun law that's ever been enacted in the United is States a is a violation of the second amendment. Right. So it's done nothing, in my opinion. Yeah. I mean, you could make the argument that we still have some guns and blah, well, blah, blah, blah. At least blah. the attempt was there. Maybe that's yeah. more what Bruno was saying. At yeah. least when the yeah, country was, the government was created, there was some explicit attempt to be like, okay, here, these are really important. We can't abridge this. And they, you know, proceeded to ignore that. But in Brazil, that wasn't even attempted. Yeah, it's, oh, we, we want to outlaw guns. We, want, we will outlaw guns. It's, it's fine. So there's not even like, it's not even arguable that, that, that that's wrong, like mm -hmm. here, because of the second amendment. You can even argue that even mm -hmm. if, if it's debatable, you can still argue that. And I, I sort of made up a, a criterion to decide if uh, President Juma Rousseff wins re-election, I will move. It was like sort of arbitrary. Like a promise you made to yourself, just kind of on a whim. Yeah, I understand yeah. that. Yeah, it was, it was arbitrary. I could like have decided without that or I don't know. And then she won. And she won <laughs> and here I am. Yeah. And she, she's now facing huge protests. Like, I think uh, this Sunday, they had the biggest protests in the history of the country, like against the, against the government. Wow. Yeah, there was, there was like over one million people on the main uh, Sao Paulo Avenue, Avenida Paulista, mm -hmm. plus another million around the country. So it was huge. Let's see. Let's see what happens. Did you ever connect with the uh, Mises Brazil down there in Sao Paulo? Yeah, sure. Like, uh, they're, they're always present in, in events. Mm -hmm. Like, <laughs> Mises Brazil is a, a, a couple guys, like a bunch of guys. Right, yeah, like, yeah. So, you, you sort of, there's... Go ahead, finish your thought. You got 30 seconds. You have the, the institution and the people behind them. So, I, I got to know the Kyoka brothers. There's three guys right. who run it. And yeah, I, I was in contact with them. And they had the uh, they had Ron Paul at last year's conference. Very cool. Mrs. Institute. Beautiful. We'll be back with uh, more uh, Brazilian liberty when we get back. Okay. Welcome back to the Rebel Love Show, and uh, now, Bruno, correct yes. me if I'm wrong, 
your own. No, wait. <laughs> but you did something that, to my knowledge, has only been done by one other person in the entire Shire. And he's sitting right across from you. You bought a car of Bitcoin. Yeah. We did. Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I bought it. Uh, there's someone else from the community that was selling his car. He's got two, so he doesn't need I know them. He, he's try, he tries to be a baller sometimes. He tries to be what? He tries to be a baller having two cars. <laughs> oh. it's a, it's a, it's ba a, baller is American slang. Which I don't know. For yeah, like okay. basketballer. I guess well, um, someone who who has money. Yeah, but it doesn't. Like, oh, I'm, I'm extravagant. Like I, showy. I, it designates. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Actually, really is. I'm just. Being yeah, I see. Him. I see. He's but totally a baller. Is he? Who is this baller? Uh, you, uh, <laughs> we can say who he is, right? I don't see why not. It, it, he made second history. <laughs> he made what? I know he doesn't want to talk about the price of it though, because I unless you want to say it, I have pressured him multiple times. The, the, the I want to know how many Bitcoin it was. Mm. <laughs> what he won't tell me. Oh yeah, that's that's between me and him. Yeah, you can say it if you want, Shire dude. I'm not gonna out, I'm not gonna out <laughs> other Bitcoin <laughs> agorist vehicle sellers on this show. God that's damn a, it. that's <laughs> probably a good idea. <laughs> Let's respect him. Yeah, because you know, we, we, involved. We, we Besides, might. like it was a, a value when we did the transaction. Now it's something completely different in fiat. Mm. So one day it will be like the price of a, a Cadillac. Hey. Uh, I bought I bought know. my car at like eight hundred and fifty USD uh toward one per one Bitcoin. Wow. Yeah, wow. right. So, yeah. I, I don't Oh you were I'm the, sure, the, I'm the sure. other person. I thought it was him. Was oh, no. no. Yeah, I don't know, man. I I, so uh, I retract the, the I uh, I'm still first. proud of you. <laughs> I'm still happy for you. Yeah, yeah, no. Uh I actually um mine mine was a funny story. I uh I bought mine day day two. So actually, within the first twenty four hours, I bought it out in Keene and whatnot. And uh, what was crazy is I get pulled over like three days in to being in the state. So here I am. All right. First off, I it had a free Keene license plate on it, which I took off. <laughs> yeah. All right. But I was still driving. Wait, free Keene, or was it like one of the Shire Society plates? It was either a, a Shire Society or a free Keene plate. I, I forgot. Were doing or like it had something like that, like over where Some the plate like was. Thing. There was an advertisement there. <laughs> so I just, it was like, a, I, I took it off because I'm like, okay, I'm already driving without a plate. <laughs> and I'm driving, I, I'm driving this car, mind you. Okay. And I get pulled over, and I took that off. I, maybe, I don't know, but there's a bunch of stickers on my car, um, Liberty stickers. So anyways, I'm in Manch, and I bought the car in Keene. I'm driving with a Illinois ID. I have a, um, the, uh, what was it, the title? The title of the car is from South Carolina. The bill of sale is in uh, Bitcoin, and there's actually a <laughs> QR code on, <laughs> and on the bill of sale. It's in it's in the room. It's yeah, actually framed I, yeah, on the I wall over there. there. I mean, you can't see it on the yeah. camera, but but uh, I can see the QR. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but so I hand that over to the police officer. <laughs> I'm like, here's my here's my Illinois ID. Here's the here's the title from South Carolina. <laughs> no plates and the, oh, the bill of sales in Bitcoin. Do what you want to do with that. Don't <laughs> that stuff. I don't even care. Knock yeah. yourself out. I could, yeah, t do your worst to me. <laughs> you know. Um, thank God they didn't, you know, kidnap me or steal my car. So I'll, I'll give them that much. Unfortunately, but I still had to go register it. But yeah, it was a fascinating. I don't know if yours was as a fascinating story of buying a car with Bitcoin, though. No, so far I haven't been pulled over. Uh, that's why I walked here tonight. You're afraid of being pulled over? Yes, I'm scared shitless. <laughs> Well, hey, Rob's been pulled over how many times? Oh, my God. I have been pulled over in New Hampshire at least 12 or 13 days. In a little over a year being here. Yeah. You're an well, American citizen. Yeah, well, I think... Not by choice, man. I know, but you can be, you can be kicked out of the country. I that's, could. That's something... I don't know. If I, if I renounce gonna... my citizenship, they deport me. Yeah, if you do something like that, but... Yeah. yeah. No, I get... I understand. Yeah, no, I totally yeah, understand. I, I, get, I get what you're Yeah, they, they could from. send you to Gitmo, but... <laughs> that's extreme. Well, the that's extreme. No, the, NDA, like the NDAA man, they can they can uh, detain that me. They can disappear and, all, yeah. and disappear me. They can Orwell yeah. you. Oh yeah, there's the black site in Chicago yeah. and everything. Yeah, there oh, is. My and the others we don't know about yet. Well, I think Bruno's uh, impression is is mostly correct. Right, the fear. Right, right at the beginning, he's never been pulled over by American police. He doesn't know what it's like. Maybe he's seen some videos or some YouTube, or you have some perspective Heard stories about his own police in Brazil, right? Which are probably not very friendly either. Uh, but I think it's his first impression is pretty accurate. You know, he's scared shitless. Is uh, exactly where I'd expect to be. Yeah, 
Yeah, if you get pulled over by the police, um, have a plate on your car. Hey, here's the thing. Do you want to Two be... is better, right? Yes. Uh, my, mine only has one, one because well, it's Well, no, Texas. no. What you should do... Well, f you might be okay with that for a little bit. What you should do is get registered uh, with an LLC somewhere else. Yeah, you know, I was at Montana, Montana, or, uh, Wisconsin. Wisconsin. Montana, and Wisconsin seem to be the two big ones. Um, you do that, and then you don't have to have two plates. You have one plate, mm -hmm. and you don't have to go through uh, registration and uh, inspection. And I've also heard I'll of people tell you all that they register the card in LLC, and then they register the LLC in a different state. <laughs> 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 so it's like, and it's like a dead end too. Like you don't have to like put your name on. I forget the exact loophole, but there's I'll, all sorts of stuff you can do. I'll tell you one thing. There's yeah. one tip I'll give you. Um, Police in America seem to operate by magic words. So if you know the incantation, <laughs> if you if you know the magic words, you can kind Sounds of like sorcery, you sir. can kind of polite your way out of a lot of things. Um, if that makes sense, just evoke just invoking your right to um, not incriminate yourself right. does a lot to actually get them to stop acting in ways to try to incriminate you. So there's there's magic words, there's ways that you can work in those situations to your benefit. My my also suggestion for you, don't say anything that you don't have to say. Don't pull a billy rock. Yeah, that's All what right. I'm that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, the magic yeah, yeah, words. Yeah. She, she didn't even want she to say, say the magic she words. She didn't even say the magic she words. She didn't even, yeah, she yeah. right. And that's what could have saved her. Yeah. You know? But a, a, an activist over it was a year and a half ago now, right? Yeah. It's been a while. Uh, Amanda Billy Rock um, was yeah. pulled over and she did Hardcore video, if you ever got to see it when it was on the YouTube for like three minutes. <laughs> it was yanked, yeah. Yeah. Whoever has that should upload it. Anyways, um, she didn't say anything. She got pulled out of the car and arrested because she didn't say anything. And, you know, say, you know, don't be like that. Don't be 100% quiet. Yeah, I hear. You I, should I, just, yeah, just have a game plan. Before and have a camera. Yes. <laughs> have a camera going. I, I'm, I'm planning on that. Okay. I still like, I, I literally, I've been so, pulled over. So much. I'm a cop magnet. Like I literally cannot walk a house without my uh, my Sony Handycam like in my pocket because I'm afraid I'm going to get pulled over. Like I, I know that sounds that's a, that's more of a fear. I think that's more of a fear, not just here, just in general. That's just like the the, the state of affairs that we live in. Um, I feel like that's my gun, and I cannot, I can't, I can't leave without having that. I mean, mind you, I can use my cell phone as well, which I'll I do from time to time. You have a too. smartphone, right, Bruno? Uh, I don't I wouldn't call it smart. It's more like <laughs> C C grade. Yeah. Okay. All but, right. Oh yeah. I don't no, know. That's still, that's still. If you can get like apps on there, then I mean, we have a camera on it. So yeah, there's yeah, a camera on it. Yeah. But I, I might buy a camera just for that. Mm, okay. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe. Well, I like Maybe. using Bambuser to live stream, I mean, and then I set it up, and it posts immediately to my Facebook and Twitter. So and if you, I ever have a copy counter, if you check, and, and if you see that, then, if you go to uh, shydo.com, you can see me being live streamed buying Bitcoin. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We'll be back with more Bambuser. And he oh, my said, Eskimo cousin. Hmm? <laughs> That's, by the way, uh, YouTube audience, you're not going to be disappointed with our next segment. We're going to that next segment. All right, we got it. We want we want to do something that may horrify you, or um, or excite or the excite crap out of you, shit out of you. Yeah. one or the other. But we had a, we, we went through a revelation it's last night. Both. Okay, segment and coming up. We're talking so about our Eskimo what family was, tree. What I was saying is, you have to say you are invoking your rights to remain silent. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, which is or some variant of that. Mm -hmm. But it is, this is genius. This is absolutely genius. Right, Fifth like, Amendment. You don't have to incriminate yourself. Yeah, but you have to say you're not saying There's, anything. If like, you don't, come on. They don't feel you got to hand. You, or you're a criminal or whatever. You yeah. have to hand. You have to hand over your paperwork. So you got to hand yeah, your ID, the registration. It's, it's, yeah, that's, yeah, but, but once, you don't even actually have to hand over registration because I have never carried it in my car just because I'm lazy. I don't know why, but. Everything. They can look it up by the they fucking up. plate anyway, so, so I don't understand why you, you have to have it in the car. All you need is a license, yeah. and you don't even necessarily need that if you talk to J, J Love or um, uh, what's his name, Abel, who's Some now in, sovereign who, who's now in jail because of it. But <laughs> sometimes, <laughs> technically, you may not need it. But yeah, yeah. driver's, if, li if driver's license in, for sure. Yeah, if he's in jail, yeah. What mug is that, Mateus? And um, this is a Liberty.me mug. Wow. That's and so my fancy. license is Brazilian, so I have a, an international driving permit, which technically, strictly speaking, isn't valid here, but I won't tell them that. Yeah, they probably won't know. Yeah, they won't know. 
because like it's valid in countries which have signed the, com the Vienna Convention. I worked with this at the <laughs> ministry, so I know the, the details. This is exactly what I worked with. Um, the US is not a signatory, so. Well, I don't, I don't believe I know that. Just put it on the chat. <laughs> yeah, they, they won't talk about the chat. LRN Newbie has uh, has defined baller. Baller, a thug that has made it to the big time. Originally referred, wait, originally referred ball player referred to ball players that made it out of the streets to make it as a pro ball player, but now is used to describe any thug that is living large. Yeah, I like that. I think that fits. Yeah. It's a good thanks, Newbie. It's a good Urban Dictionary esque. He might have actually just definition. taken that straight from Urban Dictionary. I don't know. Or put it there. I'd like to think he was eloquent enough to make it up himself. Well, you're just generous. Hey, we will take any questions, by the way, in the chat. I'm in the chat right now. Rob's in the chat, too. Yeah, this um, is a poly chat. <laughs> is that Ricky? Right. I really that close it's together? Just... <laughs> <laughs> oh, you look terrible. Put him back on. <laughs> I, I still have your mushroom picture ingrained in my mind. The, oh, the Shire Dude Church one? No. Mushroom picture. The selfie you took of yourself while you're on a class trip. I don't remember this. You showed me it like the next day. Oh yes. <laughs> oh yeah. That was freaky. So what are we opening up with? We're going with. Uh, I will never show that to the internet ever, ever, ever. <laughs> um, yeah, you won't. Oh, come back. Welcome back to the Rebel Love Show, and uh, we're going to change subject completely, because that's what we do on the show. We never stay on topic. Uh, that's what breaks are for. Yes. The breaks, they just they, they come, and you know what? You, you, we we kind of figure out, like, you know what? Let's talk about something else. And that's what we do on the show. We ri Only, I think, one time since we've been live on LRN that we actually stayed on topic to the, from one break to the other, and that's only because we had to clear some air. Um, right. Yeah. So that was like really one of the only reasons that we've ever stayed on from topic. from one segment to the next. Other yeah. than that, it's just been totally sporadic. Yeah, that's pretty much what we do. <laughs> so, uh, you know, MVG was here last night. We had a revelation. We did the research. We 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 <laughs> dotted. We yeah, have we, the documents. We, we have the document. <laughs> we connected the dots. <laughs> you consulted the specialists. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, one thing in this community. <laughs> one one thing in this community is. Uh, a lot of people have sex, and it's within kinda, the community, yes. And uh, it's kind of we're not going to name names because I'm not going to do that. I don't want to do that. No names. However, it's really fascinating when you find out how many Eskimo brothers you have, and then find out how many Eskimo cousins you so have. So Eskimo <laughs> Eskimo brother, for people who are unfamiliar with the term, is someone who slept with a person that you've slept with. Right, Eskimo brother or sister, Eskimo sister. When you uh -huh. have like fifty like Eskimo cousins. <laughs> It starts like snowballing, like way out. It gets a little crazy. And that's only the ones that we know about. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like I mean, MVG here. You, how many times you're a, a cousin of ours? No, and I'm not. I'm barely. I'm like no, seven, you're on the no, seven, seven, wait, seven wait, away. Wait, wait. Um, like six degrees. I had this written down. I want to say MVG. You're only like five away from Rob. Five degrees. Of I think no, seven, no, 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 no. Or it's, even closer. It's closer. Because then it's got to be it's, three. It's three. It's got to be an odd number. It's okay. Three. Yeah, it's three from Rob, and you're five away from me. Man, that's disconcerting. <laughs> <laughs> what well, did you expect? Would you rather it be two? <laughs> <laughs> two. That would be a different story. That That'd would be, be brothers. Yeah. That would be. Uh, hmm. No, that wouldn't be. That would be one more removed from brother. Yeah. It would be one. It would be brother plus no, one. Wouldn't, wouldn't one just be like? Oh no, one actually, is the person you, you slept with. That's with. right. That's yeah, right. One is so two is brothers. With. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> it's all very confusing. It is very, very confusing. Anyway, so long story short, if you basically <laughs> sleep with like one per this community, you pretty much have slept with everyone at that point. It's it's mortifying. To to we were writing it down on a bubble chart. <laughs> <laughs> and um, we were making the connections and like trying, we, we would just pick someone at random out of the community and <laughs> yeah. try to add them. How can we connect this person <laughs> to our sex life? And it somehow works. there has to be a way. And almost every time we grab some, some name, someone we know, like we, we're like, oh, we know this person, that person. And like, it just kept going around. Yeah. And all of a sudden, like, it might be like nine layers deep or 11 layers deep. Yeah. But nine, nine that you know. That we know of. Right. It could be shorter. I am nine away 
from Brett Vinat. I'm so proud of that. By the way. <laughs> I, I'll be honest. I'm kind of proud of the of the amount of high profile people that are in our uh, Eskimo family. Right, tree. Luke Radowski. But no, but no. <laughs> I'm I'm dropping names now. I'm sorry. I know, you're not supposed a little to, bit of sangria. You're not, you're not and supposed to do names. that, dude. <laughs> I know I'm the guest you here, but I'm gonna ask you guys a yeah, question. Yeah. Okay. Seriously, are you surprised by this? N you know, not at all. No. Okay. Not at all. Oh okay. yeah. No. It's it's to be expected. I actually avoided it for the dating first in the community. Months. Yeah. First few months I was here, I I I avoided. And then you it. made up for lost time. <laughs> <laughs> no. And okay. Then, in my defense. The, the the first uh, person that I really dated when I got here was outside of the community, but had been with people in the community. Right. So that like, defe that defeated the purpose completely. Uh, and then um, it just snowballed after that. Right. You have the... And if the you think of it, the, the tree, the family tree w is probably already, but will become more and more international. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> it's like a, liber a huge libertarian Eskimo family. <laughs> Worldwide. I'm trying to Worldwide. inject some culture into this family tree. <laughs> you yeah. gotta, you gotta think like at like liber liberty conferences like that kind of facilitates that, right? <laughs> yeah, there was like international <laughs> students for liberty conference. Oh, these are like migratory right. patterns for libertarians. Yeah. Yeah, there was like people from forty eight countries. Yeah, the people migrate thousands of miles to meet somebody, to find a mate and to hopefully, you know, create some kind of spawn or something. But mm. we need more liberty babies though. I think that's activism, isn't it? If it's filmed. If it's filmed. Yeah, if it's filmed, and then that child's life has to be on YouTube twenty four seven. All right, have a camera in front of them the whole time, but then maybe, then maybe it's activism. Maybe it's it's libertarianism. If if that as long as you it's, film, def it's definitely all creepy. Yeah. In the creepy. building, in the no, building no, no. I live, I live in. There's one baby due anytime. So. so I don't see. Here's my thing with, in regards to recording and stuff like that. We make jokes about like what's activism, what not. You know, obviously, if it's film, it's activism. That's the joke. <laughs> that's the joke. Yeah, that's a but, truism. <laughs> very true. Yes, I, I agree. I've got that joke. Yeah, I mean, if it's not film, it's not activism. Well, things can be activism if it's not film. But I, if it, no, if no, filming I, it, it's no, always activism. I argued this with Shire Dude last night. It's um, if it's filmed, it's necessarily activism. But if it's not filmed, it's necessarily not activist. It's a sufficient, it's a necessary and sufficient condition of activism. <laughs> yeah, I mean, in my opinion, so you can make like activism unwittingly, like just absolutely push, push yes. the wrong button in your, with your cell phone in your pocket, There's and then that's activism. <laughs> what do you think yeah. we do? Pocket activism. <laughs> We're recording stuff, so it's activism. Yeah. Um. <laughs> X-rated activism. <laughs> yeah, but no, my my whole thing like recording uh, video and photos and stuff like that. You do realize, like in the liber in this like mindset, we're all privacy oriented. Okay, we're very very privacy oriented. We don't want. I don't know. I'm not. Uh, no, neither am I. <laughs> I I'm not I at all. My, my secrets are all out there. I don't. Uh, I don't hide anything. Um, but here's the thing: the average person, you know, Joe Schmo that lives right next door to us. All right. Most people, you know what they do? They take pictures. You know what they do with those pictures? They put them on Facebook. They put them on Instagram. All right. They put them in frames. Most they, put them in fr they do put them in frames. They put them in like frames that they design that they throw on Facebook. <laughs> All right. And then they title those albums. Who has like, you know, a bunch of pictures every. And if they do have them in a frame, it's a digital frame. No, have I've never frames, seen though. digital frames I've seen in digital home. Frames. Yeah, only in like, I'm seriously considering yeah. buying a digital frame. Yeah, see? For my, yeah, yeah, my full digital frames. Frames. Yeah. Yeah. people from Brazil and everything. Actual I framed miss, photos, I, miss, I feel like. Just because yeah. technology is now 30% as expensive as in Brazil doesn't mean you should buy a digital frame. At any rate, all I'm saying is <laughs> the normal person, the average person takes photos of their friends and family and they share it with their friends and family. I agree. It just so happens that I had, you know, Everyone in the liberty movement kind of just friends everybody. You know, that's a thing we do. We friend people. Even if we never met that person before, it's like, oh, that, has, that guy has 100 mutual friends or 50 mutual friends. Right. And then you, you have know? sex with them. That's yeah. what we're saying. <laughs> On camera, because that would be activism. Because that's activism. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That came full wow. circle. Yeah. Oh, wow. That was good, wasn't it? Uh, what's your name again? <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, do you want to get into the next topic here, Rob? Yeah. Like, I I feel like filming is activism, but um, in this instance of filming is kind of like scary, right? I'm glad they filmed it though, because oh, they man. a lot of people didn't really believe. Okay, um, yeah, let's go. Now, originally, I didn't want to talk about this, but Ian uh, posted this on Freaking, so it's public. So we're gonna because at first I didn't want to like lay it all out that it's out there. 
that well, they're here. It's, I mean, it's happening. Yeah. Uh, if you go to freekeen.com, you'll see right on the front page the video with Ashley and Damon. Oh, right. It's this yeah. ongoing drama. Ashley and Damon, um, they say they moved here for the Free State Project. They're uh, apparently from Seattle, Washington, supposedly, uh, but they have Idaho, Idaho plates on their cars. The cars from Idaho. Um, these two people, they came to Liberty Forum, uh, and they basically pissed off almost every single Free Stater that uh, was there uh, and also pissed off almost every Free Stater out in Keene. Um, it's fascinating to see someone come in and literally destroy every bridge before it's even built. It's um, insane. Yeah, they moved here, right? Allegedly. Allegedly. Uh, I mean, they're staying in a hotel as far as I know right now. So maybe they're just, they came here for Liberty Forum to troll and go back home. Yeah. That's the, a possibility. So the consensus is for, with some people that they are live action trolling, like trolling in real life. Like the internet was not enough for them. And uh, we'll, we'll definitely get more into the we'll, story. We'll, 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 we'll hit it up with exactly who they need. Who they represent. Or who they really are. Because, cool. because uh, Damon is uh, free domain Damon. He said, remember we we're talking about this with Carlos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The doc he he's the one that was uh releasing the doc he was releasing documents on people within uh Free Domain Radio and listeners and stuff like that, trying to take down Stefan Molyneux. That guy's on our doorstep. Yeah, guys, we don't take calls, but uh if you post in the chat room, I am keeping a avid watch over that. Um and if you guys want to check out you know, the front page of Free Keen, uh, that's, that's where the Damon story broke. Also, DamonDocs.com, which is also linked from the Free Keen page. That's more backstory. Uh, all right. Hmm. Um, so basically, God, I mean, we're running out of topics here. <laughs> Feel free to talk. <laughs> all right. Not this, right. Feel free to talk, and if you have a... It's St. Patrick's Day. A, a story to tell. I love hearing stories. Tell a story. Yeah. What? I think I like what? From Brazil. Yeah, from my move. Yes. Like that. Tell stories like that. I'm great at stories. I can tell a story for like an hour. You were talking about people that you had sex with. I didn't what I wasn't about the name drop names. The Shire dude's just name and dropping left and right. I'm uh hold on. YouTube, I am, I am, uh, hold on one second. Let me get this, uh, I want a camera on me for this. I'm four away from Ian Freeman. <laughs> twice. Twice. From two different directions? Twice? From two different directions. Whoa. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Actually, you're probably, you might even be closer. I'd have to check. No, no, <laughs> you so did the, the same. Twice? Though? So you're four away from Ian Freeman twice. Hey, did the trust get expanded? Because wait, wait, wait. Rob wait. and I are Eskimo brothers. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah. Did the chart ex get expanded oh, after left? Oh, wait, that's from... A little bit. Okay, I, I understand. I, I understand where one comes from. Where's... I'll show you the chart. <laughs> okay. I know one for sure. We... I know one for sure. <laughs> Can we break out the chart after the show? <laughs> after the show, not on camera. That shall not be released. Yeah. What if you Damning show information. It should not be released. It's in color. So what if it's you show it coded. far away so no. that people can see it, but they Someone, can't read it? Newbie 66 in. is going to zoom yeah. in and enhance that'll, that'll it. That'll destroy the damage. It'll and release the, the damage. Shire Dude Next thing we know, <laughs> yeah. Next thing we know, Free Domain Damon is like releasing all of the, like, the sex history of Free Staters. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> I think this, this may indicate that I'm a bit like in a wrong naive, but I might already be in, in, the, in this very same Eskimo family That's tree. Right. Maybe. Who, who? Without, without banging anyone here. Hmm. Huh. Like, maybe. How, have you... Could be. I know people visitors? who know people who... You see the point. They've had sex here. Or with someone who... Lives in Brazil. Yeah. People from here travel. <laughs> yeah, right, of course. Are those Bluetooth earbuds? Yeah. How do you like them? Huh? How do you like them? Um, they're good, although the hard plastic... Kind of, kind of gets me in the back of the head a little bit, but otherwise they fit kind of snugly. So I think we sell some in somewhere, and they're that. like super flexible and shit. Cool. 
shiny badges. I really wanted to get Davi to sing shiny badges when he was on the show. <sighs> For people on YouTube that if you ever hear the shiny badges commercial and Davi Barker, so I'll send you something weird. You send worms. This is it. Oh, don't spoil it. <laughs> no. Don't spoil it, Rob. No, this was it for you. This is it. That's true. That's for true. him. He has yeah, actually yeah. Says it's the I same said, for everyone. I said worms to him in person. That's and he true. gave me this in person. He has actually said that it's been different things. Oh, yeah. Or kind I, of I would be, I would be surprised if it was the same. Worms. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to Freedom Feeds. <laughs> Welcome back to the Rebel Love Show. Uh, and we're at the top of the hour here. We're going to go back to the whole uh, Freedom Main Damon situation. Right. Damon Ashley. So basically, uh, the gist of what's going on that we believe uh, to be accurate as of right now is that uh, Freedom and Damon, who is of the, uh, he's the guy that was uh, doing the doxing on uh, Stefan Molyneux and listeners and whatnot. Well, you know, he, he still likes Stefan Molyneux, but he doesn't like anyone who's associated with Stefan Molyneux, as far as I understand it. And he's been releasing private information about all of, like, Stefan's, like, inner circle. You know, that whole culty kind of inner circle yeah. thing. And, um... Yeah, I've seen I've seen the website and it's it's terrible. Like it's like people's like phone numbers and addresses and I mean you, you know people could do some damage there. Yeah, yeah. It's it's scary that like this man traveled across the continent to do that here. Right when, to to us. Yeah, like we're we're people that you know uh, we follow the nap. We're peaceful people, and coming here to do that it, it's just kind of crazy. Now he him and his. Uh, a girlfriend, cohort, cohort, uh, partner in crime, Ashley. Um, <laughs> I've had, they've had so many interactions in just during Liberty Forum and in Keene to where you saw multiple Facebook groups all talking about it, like throwing information left and right. Everyone communicating, regardless if they're in Keene or if they're in Manch or anywhere else, like everyone communicating, sharing information about it. <laughs> like people that you would normally not assume to like actually be like hanging out and communicating, actually communicating and like not regarding beefs or anything else, like saying, oh my, this is what happened to me. This is what happened here. Um, it was fascinating to see like the community come around like someone else coming in that uh, is trouble. Nothing unites a group like a common enemy. Yeah, no, seriously. Like it was, it was actually almost, uh, it, it did take away from some of our, uh, <laughs> Our, our um, uh, beef. Our, yeah. yeah oh, a little. Yeah. I don't know. Anywho. <laughs> um, but no, it was fascinating to see everyone come together with it. Uh, it was fascinating. Like, I had two uh, interactions with these people. The first, the first one was kind of creepy. Now, here's another thing. In my travels here and el elsewhere and being in this whole liberty community online and whatnot, I've run into a lot of creepertarians. <laughs> a lot. Like the, the guy at the TSA? Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, no, no, not like that. What do you mean, the guy at the TSA? The guy, the guy that, that identified you. Oh, that's different. That's because he was a, a former customer of ours. Oh, that's right. Your, your yeah. day job. Yeah. Though well, I did get recognized at work earlier uh, this week by uh, someone that lives here. That's a whole other story. That was actually really, really weird. But I'll, I'll share that story later tonight. Um, but uh, anywho, uh, no, like uh, I've met a lot of creepertarians, okay? I've met a lot of them. And all of them, like, they're just socially awkward. You know, a lot of us are socially awkward. You get it. It's like, okay, you, you mean well. Like, some, some people are socially awkward. It is what it is. But I think most mm -hmm. people in general are socially awkward. They weren't socially awkward. They were just straight up, you know, like, trolling. And, like, they, they came in uh, at the hotel lobby, and they are like, trying to get, uh, get Anne to, like, open a bottle or something, like, weird. And they wouldn't introduce, like, who their names were and stuff like that. Um, at, you know, talking about the, the queue and it was just like really weird, you know, and then everything, every other per person that's had interaction with them has been pretty much did, the same. Did you interact with them all, uh, all, all Mateus? No, I didn't no. actually. I saw them. Um, I noticed them kind of from a distance and I don't remember if I was sitting with you guys or near you guys when they interacted with you but i kind of remember being in that proximity not only not, it takes a lot okay to be within one week's time not only did they get kicked out of the queue they got 
kicked out of a, a social Sunday in Keene by Keen. other Keene activists. Yeah, like right. how do you get kicked and they're banned from a parent fan from there? But it's like, how do you like, unless it's purposely done, mm. there's no way in a matter of one week in like just being here fresh. Yeah. Right. You know, fresh mean the you, grinder, you like can't. automatically. There's no amount of Aspie that'll make that happen. There's yeah. More than that. It's impossible. Yeah. It, it's fascinating to see like, but now the thing is like, you know, their it's their information has been uh, provided around. I won't associate with them if I see them at a meeting. I'm just gonna walk out if they're still there. Right. Like, I'm not gonna. Well, or 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 approach them and speak to them and try to convince them to leave or to quit, well, hopefully or to quit to quit their plans or you know whatever it is that they're doing. That's what really gets me of, of this whole thing. Like, what could your goal be? Coming to a state just to tick people off? It's cold as fuck up here. So I mean, <laughs> I don't know. Like, that's a bad well, choice. But, but they're from. Seattle or Idaho, so well, it's, I mean, it's still cold out there yeah. as well. But it, it's just, you know, I moved here to to better my life. You know what I'm saying? I didn't move here to like troll status or something like that. Don't get me wrong. I guess that kind of happens in when some activism that we do. Right. But I didn't move here for that. I moved it's here incidental. To be, it's incidental. Yeah, I moved here to be part of this community. I didn't move here to like troll a certain group of people in a community or something like that. You know? And I, I feel like they actually have some alternative mean. Uh, uh, purpose. I don't know. Uh, it's just really fascinating to see something like that unfold and happen. It's like we've attracted like live in person trolls from the other side of the continent to move here just to troll and us. How do we handle that? And that's crazy because you know it'd be one thing if it was a Fed. If it was a Fed, like they actually have to follow some sort of um, rules of engagement. You know what I'm saying? All things aside, they're not gonna like. You're not scared that they're gonna like. Do, I mean, the the government always does stuff that's violent, but at least there's. Well, I mean, I, I'm saying this because as if there is, but there's some sort of code of conduct. Well, yeah, if they sure. were feds, they would have acted more carefully, obviously. Yeah, and they wouldn't. Mm. Yeah, because so, clearly they're yeah. not succeeding. Yeah, yeah, they're not. If they're succeeding. feds. They're the most terrible feds I've ever heard of. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're not really good at going yeah. undercover. So, it, it it brings me to the to point where like, all right. If they were doing, if they moved here for this, like how much, like, can I even like be around these people? You know what I'm saying? Well, it's uh, I don't even know who these people are. Oh, you, you, uh, we'll, we'll show you who they are. Okay. I'm surprised you're. You got to be in some. You got. We got to add you to our Facebook group, sir. All right. <laughs> okay. Because uh, this community unfortunately lives and dies on Facebook. Hey, Bruno. Um, what kind of activities have you been? attending like how many people have you been meeting or have you been going to parties or or gatherings or things here? Well, um, I've been to the Quill like a couple times. Uh -huh. Went to the poker night on Friday night there. It was oh, that's nice. cool. Yeah, won some money and everything. <laughs> <laughs> and I've been to the tours, the pre liberty forum tours. Oh, so it right. this is why I I wasn't at my new, new new movers party. Like I was in the Upper Valley, I think that day or some somewhere else. Right. Yeah, you were doing the the pre liberty forum tour in Upper Valley. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, on man. April uh, in April I'll be on. My new movers party. My, I have to be. I my advice. My advice to you, and this is I say this to every new mover. All right, you be a social butterfly. You get out. You you join as many Facebook groups as you can. You add as many free staters as you can, even if they don't add you. They will at some point. And some people are very private, so whatever. But uh, you make yourself known. You go to all. You go to as many groups as you can. You're doing that right. Go go travel the state. Go to as many meetups as you can. Introduce yourself. Make contacts. Because let me let me be perfectly honest. Besides Mateus here, who I, I knew when I first got here, like no one that I, I really that met really when I first met here that I really associate with anymore. So like you know, I'm living with two people that mo that moved here after I moved here. So this community is always. It's always changing and fluctuating sure. and, and evolving. It, it, it's you know, it, a, a couple of months from now, everything is going to be different. All right, know, your social yeah. situation and everything. Everything's going to be different in a shire year. In two shire years from now, just forget yeah. about it. Well, your 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 yeah, group think, of friends and your environment. Yeah, it's it changes a lot. I mean, it's it's probably like a, a bigger version of what I'm used to in Brazil because there's fewer libertarians there, but all of a sudden, two people you never imagined are dating, so their social network sort of group together and then they they split and then it's uh, things change everything so yeah i'm sort of doing that last week i was i was like off off the, all of these activities and everything for three days be, uh i'm still paying my my for my stuff here with a brazilian credit card my mom still helps me which is a bit embarrassing but <laughs> i'm working on that i'm working on that and my my the authorization for for me to use that credit card abroad had expired so i and I had to call from a landline. 
I couldn't call from a cell phone <laughs> because because they they didn't want to take calls from 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 cell phones. So it took me like three days to find a landline. Wow, what's a landline? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I haven't had, I I had thought, a landline in a decade, man. <laughs> I thought that too. Yeah, so I was like. I wasn't really going to meetings or anything because I didn't want to spend my cash. I don't have that much cash on me mm -hmm. here. So, but I'm I'm getting back on the on the stuff. I I went to two moves, like someone moving inside Manchester uh -huh. and a new mover coming from Connecticut last week, like both on the same day on Friday. Oh, like a move, oh, you're, you're move talking, in party. Are you talking about Marcel? Hmm? Are you talking about Marcel? No, isn't he from Connecticut? He just had a new movers party. You know, he's been here multiple, uh, multiple times. I don't think Marcel's from Connecticut. I'm pretty sure. Are you talking is. about like move-in parties where they move the boxes in? Yeah. Oh, okay. Cool. Cool. Yeah, it wasn't really a party I, because it was just me and the the couple that that's moving in. But oh yeah, I okay. helped them move. I have not been to one yet, actually. Movers party. I didn't even yes. have one myself. Yeah. <laughs> I came here with a bag and a cat and a cat. There's <laughs> <laughs> two of us. He's a volunteer. <laughs> 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 We'll be back at the top of the hour. It is a bad mistake. Worms. <laughs> oh, that was funny. Worms is a... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> We're, basically, there's a very popular podcast that's been on for know. Freedom Fiends. Have you ever listened to it? What, what, what? Freedom Fiends. Have you ever listened to Freedom no. Fiends? Freedom no. Fiends is a very popular podcast, and he says worms all the time on it. Oh, I forgot cool. exactly. Basically, it's like saying word from like the 80s, yeah, but, but worms. But worms. Yeah. Weird. Okay. Yeah. Right. That's the context you can figure out? He explained it a couple times. I forget it. <laughs> um, but it's, that's all a huge re mad respect for uh, um, the Cream VD because the audio in this room wouldn't be as good if it wasn't for him. Yeah, dude. And he blessed you something serious at Porkfest. I know, man. You were in, that, you were in the crowd with me, weren't you? No, I remember you telling me about it right after it happened. I gotta get the video of that. I, I gotta find that video and like, he literally points me out like in front of like a hundred people. This doing will his be presentation. my disciple. Yeah. No, he said that that was his hero's journey. <laughs> oh yeah. He was yeah. talking about a hero's journey. He was like pointing at me, like give a good audio. That's your. That's my hero's journey. Mentioning me by name, the show, everything. It was like, <laughs> I listened to like Freedom Fiends for like two years before I moved, so it was really like crazy that like someone that I have respect for is like talking up about how I'm his like. I don't know. It was, it was cool. It was really cool. Anyways, you're pointing at this. <laughs> nice. Oh. I'll have to. I'll have to to leave Porkfest one day and go to Boston because there's a what? Rush concert, right? Rush concert. Yeah. Yeah. So wait, wait, wait. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You said you're favorite... leaving Porkfest. Yes. Yeah, to go favorite... to a concert. My Are you fucking mad? Band. In Boston, no less. My favorite band. I don't care. Their last tour. Wait, what band? Are you coming back the next day? What, sure. What, what band is okay. it? Rush. Oh, well, Rush, man. Rush, Rush man. For fuck's sake. Okay. Last, if it's a Monday, last if tour. it's a Monday, it's okay. If it was like a Friday no, I think it's or a Tuesday. Saturday, that'd I be a different a story. Tuesday, yeah. Tuesday is fine. You can miss that. Yeah. I mean, every, every day is fucking like paradise. Thousand person anarchy. I know. But if you're going to miss the day of paradise, it'll just be in the early ones. Yeah. I yeah, know. we got six minutes. I want to go grab a drink. This is the long break. Oh, okay. What? No, I'm just going to grab a... Grab some sangria, man. Yeah. Rob, can you get me some water, please? Sure. Ooh. FYI, I told you to think about it. Um, I wanted to hit the... Uh, yeah, one more hour. I wanted to hit the uh, updates, Rob. Yeah. Next segment. Yeah. Well, I can talk some more about Brazil and stuff. Yeah, man, like what the Liberty Movement is like in Brazil uh, compared to here. Maybe uh, goals of being here. I'd yeah. like to hear about that. Good to have you guys on. It's good times. Especially on the holiday. <laughs> Since we talked about it, I, ha I want to check now. Yeah, it's a Tuesday, the day I'll, I'll be off breakfast. Let's see. Hey, anyone uh, watching us on YouTube? I forgot, or I don't know your name. You guys have probably noticed this already, but we have a green screen set up right behind me. It's pretty janky right now because we don't have great lighting, but this is all a green screen. I I've always wanted one of these. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
Yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't know if Bo Davis is still watching, but we need to have you back on, buddy. Yeah, buddy. We need, we need uh, your camera skills, apparently. <sighs> no, I just... Okay. This, your head's cut off, man. It's right there. Look, your head is cut off. This was... I set this up today. I set up the green screen today. Okay. You know how frustrating that was? <sighs> you know how I hate doing shit last minute. I do. Yeah. And you're like, oh, I'm going to like redo the entire studio, this put green screen this everywhere, is my childhood change the camera dream. angles. I know, but it's like I... <sighs> well, you, you had already redone the table thing. So. I, I now, mind you, we something. talked about that, though. Yeah. We had a discussion about, about it. Myself and my plans and everything. I might, I might mention that I'm leaving. That's not true, but I wanted to go on air. Right You're leaving. Where are you going? In like July or August. Where are you going? That's when my visa expires. Oh. I don't want to just stay. Like no, I will. I'm just saying that I'm leaving. I highly doubt the government's listening. Well, they could be listening to us. They could be listening. I don't care. They can listen all you want. Well, yeah, you are. Leaving. Oh, I do want to talk about my story at work. <laughs> Your story at work. Yes, I, 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 uh, I, uh, in the, in my job, I, I, I don't say where I work, but I kind of have to say this because I sell cell phones. I know where you work. Yeah, I know. But uh, anyways, uh, so this kid, uh, not kid, like a 17-year-old or whatnot, uh, he had to trade in his phone to upgrade. My Instagram feed was on his phone when I went to go unlock it. That's pretty creepy. He knew who I was. If I was going to be creepy, I'd do it that way. Yeah. Like, if I was going to let someone know that I know them, I'd do it that way. Here, please. Unlock my phone, sir. <laughs> well, yeah. he didn't know. I don't think he knew that I was going like to look at No, he didn't like, know. You know You know what's creepier than that? Like, whoa. You know what's creepier than that? A government employee asking for your phone, for you to unlock it, for him to take a look at it. <laughs> that happened to me. Right? Yeah. Newbie. At the border, yeah. <laughs> what do you say? Uh, he new, didn't say anything. He newbie wants to you to know that he load, personally load, identifies load. as an Aspie American. <laughs> I wish I knew who Newbie sixty six was. Like he's so funny. I'm willing to bet he's someone I've met. I'm willing to bet he lives yeah. here. You know, I think I may have met him at a new movers party in the no, summer. I huh? Flew into Atlanta. Sure, dude. You know what's funny is that yeah. I had the pleasure. Absolutely, absolutely, newbie. Go on. I had the pleasure once of being identified uh, yeah, by Riaz as the least Aspie the libertarian. One, one, one day into the other. Yeah, one end to the other. The guys I More had than after me? was cleared to enter the country. As he to he told me he was like, because he, he tried to, told them he tried to pull, you know, you know, pull some shit on me or whatever. He tried to like run, play a joke run. or whatever. You know, Riaz had I mean, his way. My bag didn't and I didn't bite. I just like called him on it. He's like, you know what? You're the least, least weird. You're the least asked one here. Yeah, I had to wait a couple. It's like, all right. Brett just tagged us on the message. Because they are state employees. It wasn't, it wasn't the bag handlers. It was security. They had to rescan my bag, and they are state employees. So of course I'm more efficient than them. Come on. Yeah, I had to run at the Toyota Jackson. Welcome back to the Rebel Love Show. Uh, we are once a week broadcast from Manchester, New Hampshire, and we are pro-pot, pro-gun, and pro-coffee. And uh, I kind of wanted to uh, go back to covering Liberty Forum. You know what happened a week and a half ago, but I feel like we didn't really cover it too much on our last episode. Uh, MVG here, you, uh, you had a few talks at Liberty Forum, right? Yeah, that's true. I spoke twice, actually. How, what were those subjects on? Um, the first talk I gave uh, was about 20 minutes, well, about 30 minutes with questions. It was a talk on uh, Bitcoin and how crypto anarchy, I believe the title was How Crypto Anarchy is Shaping the Future of Liberty. And I spoke on how um, the evolution of this type of cryptographic software allows certain types of interactions and communications and relationships to be possible that otherwise were not able to be possible and that we can you know, obviate the state and totally undermine and subvert and ignore and do away with the state instead of, you know, politicking and trying to do this kind of mass mass educational campaign that we just build the tools to, to get, kind of get around it and avoid it. 
Yeah, and if you ask my opinion, I think we in the libertarian community, at least my friends, people I know, are not. They they know this is important, like Bitcoin at the first example, but other other stuff with crypto cryptography and everything, and they don't do it. They don't like arm themselves with the the technology oh, I, and, and look, everything. And I I understand what you're saying, man. And people I, should people should do more. I think. I agree. I in my defense okay <laughs> i wasn't uh, pointing any fingers i was under the in table, my defense you know? i may not be <laughs> i may be a very bad statist all right or you know I'm, at least no, i'm not I'm, good no, you're, you're trying you're to a bad say libertarian. I'm, I'm a bad libertarian but i'm not a good statist okay okay yeah whatever i don't do means. i don't do <laughs> whatever that means i i should encrypt more communications than i do the only yeah I, I should encrypt more though uh mvg here he's a uh, he's a uh, you know, he encrypts everything. Uh, well, I wish I did more. Actually, I just keep finding out that the encryption products I'm using are insecure, so I just have to kind yeah. of keep jumping, like island hopping a little bit. Uh, but I try to use Bitcoin wherever I can. I got a dude at work at my day job, super excited about he, Bitcoin. Well, kind of. But yeah. he didn't buy his car with Bitcoin. Yeah, no, <laughs> uh, couldn't help it. The guy was that I bought it from. Not everyone could be a good anarchist like dumb. me or you. But he was he was um, watching this Drugs Inc. documentary, and they mentioned the Silk Road. There was someone that's like, I, I buy all my pills and I get all my things from here, and uh, and he got him interested, and he looked into it a little bit, and got into you know looked a little bit about Bitcoin. But he's technologically um, like an idiot savant, like very very limited, like very in the low end. So I had to like bring him in a little bit of, hey, here's Bitcoin, here's why it's cool and interesting and valuable, and you know, kind of kid gloves, uh, but. Yeah, I do what I can to try to motivate the people around here, as Bruno said, to, to take you know on these practices and to try to practice good informational security hygiene. Yeah. Um, that sounds really kind of <laughs> geeky and terrible, yeah. <laughs> but it's basically just being aware of what kind of information you're creating, where you're storing it, how you're transmitting it, who hears it, um, and and trying to protect yourself kind of in that regard. No, yeah. I, I, the, the the guy I'm living with, he he introduced me to OTR. Do you know it, Mateus? Yeah, OTR. Off the record. Yeah. Off the record. Off the record. Yeah, it's yeah. it's great. It seems like very very secure. It's very yeah. OTR is, is is secure. It's valuable. PGP is still secure and valuable. Um, setting up PGP uh, connection is, is is intimidating and it's difficult. Um, even with like you know the easy setup options or whatever that um, Thunderbird can can do. Um, but OTR is pretty easy. You can do a Facebook plugin. A Google Chat plugin, Yahoo Chat plugin, any kind of like chat protocol that's XMPP and other different types, you can actually connect OTR to it. So I could communicate with Rob or with ShireDude using Facebook's servers and using their network and using their backbone and be sending encrypted text. Um, but but both parties have text to be back and forth. But they had they would have to, to have installed. Yes, yeah, so it would just be the transmission like that. that would be encrypted because obviously Facebook would have the record on their chat. So yeah, so Facebook retains the metadata, but when you look at the Facebook history through their client, instead oh, it's of just using gonna, it's just gonna be encrypted. It's ciphertext. Oh. Yeah. Well, why are we doing that now? We can be. We I can, should be. I can do it for doing why, why, ten minutes. Oh my god. We can be. Nobody's nobody's Next interested. Break. Let's break. This is the thing. Nobody's interested. It seems like it falls on deaf ears. I I did PGP I, for like a minute, and I was like, this is this is yeah, way too much. I will PGP say PGP is a little bit is yeah, I, I've tried it before, and it, it I've done it, but sure. it's it's, it's a lot to to, uh, to learn to, to take learn. in. It's a high learning out. curve, unfortunately. I agree. It should be like relatively quickly a few setups and get it going. Yeah. Well, but I think I think there's a limit because of the nature of the thing. You can't make it too easy. Because if you make it too easy, it, it you end up adding vulnerabilities to it. Right. It has to have a, a certain amount of complexity, or else you lose the, the the purpose. Well, I think that I mean I think that you should be able to make PGP key pairs with a with a snap. I don't think that should be laborious, and I think that you should be, you know there could be a client, there could be a software client that everyone chooses to jump into. And it's cool, and it's it's good, you know, it's got good design, and it's the next big thing. But on the back end, all the messages are PGP encrypted and signed. You know, that that doesn't seem impossible or implausible to me. Um, the trick is just going to be mass marketing. Yeah. You know, um, I think that the real victory here for the for crypto anarchists um, is going to come not because people are going to wake up and realize, oh my gosh, I need to NSA proof my laptop. <laughs> Or you know, everyone's gonna rise up and throw off their chains all at the same time, or, or whatever. Um, it's more about getting the protocols and the base algorithms and the base um, kind of formulas for the software and getting them propagated in mass 
mass tools. Um, if if the next iPhone has you know some kind of encryption and you know open source programming and hardware baked into the back end, maybe it doesn't have to be advertised. Maybe nobody cares that it's got military grade encryption or whatever it is. Maybe that's just default. That's just in the back end. Mm -hmm. If that's the case, then we've basically won. Right. Because then everybody will just be natively using really secure systems. Aren't aren't there a few different Android phones coming out that have like a, a lot of encryption built into it, like Black Phone? Yeah, Black Phone. Um, I'm not sure if it's an Android phone. Um, well, but it's like based off of Android, anyways. Yeah, there's a couple different types of stuff. There's um, Black Phone. There was the open source phone that Canonical tried to make the um, the Ubuntu phone. Um, they raised like twenty million dollars, but it was still a flop, I guess, compared to what they were wanted. What they wanted. <laughs> um, and there's a couple other attempts at making phones that are secure. Um, Just right off the bat. From, from, from the foundation. Yeah. The problem is when you start touching the, the carriers because you can, I can, I can send um, my voice over IP, if it, you know, voice over IP, I can, I can do that, send over a data network and have it be encrypted. So Rob, when I call you on red phone, that's exactly what we're doing. Yeah. It's taking my voice, putting it over a data network, Encrypting it, sending it to you, and then your client does a handshake and decrypts it. Right. Yeah. Uh, you you can't do that over um, the cell tower, the cell signal that we're using. That's the that's the infrastructure that the phone was originally built around. You know what I mean? It's you know well, to no, communicate yeah, to the cell no, tower. Eventually, most and so that radio firmware that's built into the phone to connect to that is not open source. It's not in, in available like, to be in modified. I would, I would say five to ten years from now, there won't be that. It would all be data. Oh yeah, of course. Yeah, and that's exactly all what's been happening. It's yeah. like the barnacles eating the ship. Yeah. You know the phones. <laughs> the phones started off trying to connect to these towers, and eventually they got all the apps and the and the communication and the internet. And it's like they're shedding like it's like a snake shedding its skin. Like it's like a, the older technology that's just it's still hanging on because yeah. there's some users that still have it, yeah. so they kind of still have to support it because there's people that are paying paying people that want right. like, to have you know their burner phones that <laughs> only connect <laughs> they only connect to three uh, G you know their landlines yeah, yeah. No, landlines <laughs> Land lines, yeah. man yeah, yeah. 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 But, I mean at least I mean eventually it's all going to be just data I, I've already jumped ship I actually don't use a uh, phone to talk to people do you know how difficult you make things. When all you, you gotta do, I can't call you. You can't text me either. All you gotta do is send me a Facebook message. Well, yeah, but the problem is you're using a network that has like no service in uh, New Hampshire, so <laughs> pretty much uh, you're relying on Wi-Fi locations. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, if I'm in transit, I've, I'm obviously not gonna be messaging you while I'm like in the car. You don't have four G. <laughs> You well, yeah, you I get data I get, up and down. I can get 4G uh, most places. <laughs> okay, um, but Port still, though is impossible. Yeah, right. right. Though I actually heard they're doing like a new like mesh network thing. In Port they, say so gonna, gonna, do, they say that every year. They do. They say that every year. Or somebody, <laughs> somebody says it every year. Yeah, yeah. we'll see how it comes out. Yeah, I'm looking forward to Port Fest, man. Oh. Uh, it's only three months away. I'm just living it's my like life with one shy year to point. go. Yeah. Won't be back in one shy year. Get back. Hey, um, so no, hold on. No, yeah, By the way, this. Damon, if you're watching this, fuck you, dude. Seriously? What the fuck, man? Come at me, bro. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh damn. <laughs> Newbie, I can neither confirm nor deny that. Um... <laughs> <laughs> it's it's pretty newbie i'll tell you what i'll tell you what newbie if you come meet me face to face i will show you just you the chart oh he wants to see the chart you want to see the chart newbie you come meet me face to face well first off newbie i swear i met you at a uh at a new movers party during the summer you can correct me if i'm wrong i'm pretty sure i did Welcome back to the Rebel Love Show. And uh, one thing I want to talk about uh, right now for our listeners at home, especially the podcast listeners. Uh, FYI, you can always watch us uh, live at rebelloveshow.com slash watch. 
every Tuesday night at uh, 10 p.m. Eastern or listen to Aleron.fm to hear us uh, live. And you should also, if you're going to do that, download TuneIn Radio. You can listen to LRN wherever you are at on TuneIn Radio. So, uh, it's just not Rebel Love Show, but uh, you can listen to Flaming Freedom, Free Talk Live, Freedom Fiends, all the other great shows, Otel, all those great shows in LRN. You can listen to them live with TuneIn Radio. You can just hook that up to your car. I used to do that all the time before I moved. Highly suggest you do the same. Um, and uh, if you're uh, listening to the podcast, uh, please like us and subscribe to us on the feed and whatnot. Uh, go to YouTube and uh, subscribe to us. But rebelloveshow.com slash watch. Instead of just listening to us, you can watch us live. Uh, we usually have fun on the show, especially in the breaks. The breaks sometimes are better than the show. It's Joe- true, yeah. And the breaks you're not hearing on the, on the podcast, right? Yeah. Well, you know, it depends. Uh, sometimes I throw the... Um, if, if we're having a really funny conversation and I feel like actually editing, I will throw in some of the conversation during the breaks. <laughs> oh, but man. sometimes I'm 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 uh, I'm lazy and I just won't do that at all. Or sometimes we just have like huge technical issues, which yeah. we've had as of late. We're still having kind of like a janky show <sighs> format where you have to edit, and the, the ideal is you don't have to edit. See, the problem is, all right, we're gonna go into alert. We're gonna go a little creamy D on the uh, the crowd here. Um, uh, Michael Dean, by the way. And uh, and then you have guests <laughs> that talk when they're not supposed to talk. Yeah, yeah, no, Dave, hey, jump in, this jump guy. into this conversation <laughs> by all means. Um, but, uh, but not during the the break, though. No, it's when, when it's going the bumpers. <laughs> if you're a guest on uh, the Rebel Love Show ever in the future, if you're a new mover and you come here during the bumpers, that goes live to LRN. That's still the mics are still live at that time. Anywho, Learning Hospital. Uh, we're still we're still gonna hang and going live. Uh, we have uh, we've had a couple of hangups uh, on our end, not on LRN's end, because they're 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 the pros over there. Um, but uh, yeah, we've had a few issues with uh, the YouTube feed and then the podcast and whatnot. Uh, we're gonna get that fixed. Uh, but uh, I actually would like to know from the audience if you're listening, if you're running right now and you're listening to my voice in between your you know in your ears right now in your head. Do you like the commercial breaks on the podcast? Yes or no? Please go to go to rebelloveshow.com slash uh, well go to facebook.com slash rebelloveshow. Uh, that's our Facebook page. Go uh, comments on this show, this episode, or any other episode, or just message me or Shire Dude for that matter. Just friend us on Facebook. Um, let us know if you like the com- uh, the uh, in between the during the commercial break the banter that we have on the podcast or not, or just leave it on YouTube as like a little bonus content for. Uh, for listeners, um, I don't want to because it's not like completely professional as, as if this show is even professional. Um, but the breaks kind of have more of an intimacy to it, and and not there's a lot of pauses. Yeah. Sometimes the breaks are technical issues, and sometimes the breaks are Milky Way after midnight. Yeah, you know, <laughs> <laughs> Well, here's the thing: like you know, as a podcast listener uh, that l- used to listen to a lot of different shows on LRN, I actually like the commercial breaks because it kind of made it more human. Uh, listening to like the conversation that they're having technically off the air, even though it's on the air. Like these mics are on, um, you know, they're on like before, like either one of you got on, get walked in here. They're always already recording, you know, and like you come in for the show, it's recording the whole time, regardless if it's on a commercial break or not, you know, and sometimes. So they saw me pick my nose. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> sorry about that. There, <laughs> there are cameras. <laughs> sorry, there are cameras everywhere. Mom, if you're watching this. <laughs> You're just preparing us to live in a police state. I guess. <laughs> I'm preparing well, you. Well, here's the thing. I, I think um, in the future, privacy is not going to be like that big of a thing. Like, you don't think you can be able to generate your own privacy? When you walk outside, think about this. When you walk outside, you are caught on uh, police dash cams. Every ATM you walk by, you're caught on a camera there. You're caught on cameras in stores. You're caught on um, cell phone cameras. Oh, but then it, but it's a, but it's an arms race. You don't think that there's. So, so there's already technology. I guess that was a rhetorical question yeah. leading up to that. There's like various ways that lights flash in tandem with cameras and ways to, to, yeah. to obfuscate you. So it's kind of an arms race. I've so. seen that too. I've seen like like face paint you could put on and or like and, a, a light kind of mask yeah. or covering. Right, totally and like the, put some some. Uh, Invis- uh, transparent tape all, all over your <laughs> <laughs> I have seen people do that. They'll never recognize you then. <laughs> yeah. Just wear, just, wear pa- just wear pantyhose. <laughs> what, was there oh, like I got to show you of, something, Mateus, after the show. <laughs> was there like some Remind sort of me. poncho that someone released that's like um, heat proof so like you can't be on uh, thermal imaging from above Whoa. so like drones oh, can't like, wow. you know, you know uh, hellfire missile you because you're wearing like a, 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 a poncho that has no, it doesn't show your body heat. It, does, it insulates yeah. the heat, right? Yeah. Cool. Which is yeah, kind of crazy, you're too. Gonna, 
uh-huh. walk around. You know, you know that I, I think it's B two, the name of the bomber, the one that's yeah. all angles and, st- and right. stealth bomber, and you're gonna walk around you know, dressed up like that. <laughs> 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 Call me a dirty status, but I don't mind living in public. Yeah, like, completely. No, uh, no, no, no. I mean, it's not wrong inherently. It's not yeah, problematic it's inherently. Sim- so it's kind of a choice, preferential choice. And no, it's maybe. definitely a choice, but like for me, I find it liberating. Like I literally, you know, I walk the walk as much as I can. You know, I I go to work. Like I have I have these like you know these uh, thug you know, like anarchist tattoos thug on life my, <laughs> <laughs> on my arms. Like I'm a salesperson. I and mean, uh, honestly, I usually have my sleeves rolled up to, like just like I have now. I do that at work, right? And uh, it helps me. It actually help, actually uh, helps me sell because I uh, I'll have conversations and we've had sell conversations before. You got to build that connection with that person, right? You know, you got to build that. Uh, you got to get that wedge in. You got to get that like, hey, I'm a human being too. Like, you know, buy from me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, then. You know, um, but that always seems to actually help. This has actually helped my sales instead of uh, hinder it. Well, I thought it would though. Well, let's not forget that you're also a salesman for Liberty. That's true. That is very this true. This is a big sales project, isn't it? It is a project. I would say that we all... If you talk to Judd Weiss, he will say that there are salesmen and there are engineers. And a lot of Liberty people are engineers and they cannot talk to customers. Yeah, yeah. I agree. I am not an engineer. I'm not that smart. No, but I think I this is the biggest... This is a big sales project. This is a big sales facing. pitch right here. This yeah. is for people to move or to no, embrace the philosophy. This or... is such... Look, this is a very, very niche show. Yeah. I have no idea how niche this is. This this is for people who basically are interested in the FSP and haven't moved yet. That's basically the in a nutshell. It's basically people who are interested in the culture of Manchester. Oh, yeah. well, well, we're building the culture we're, of Manchester. I mean, we are really we are the, the only I mean, not only Manchester show, but we're the loudest, I'd say. Yeah, no, I would actually I would completely agree. Right? That's yeah. not unfair to say, no, right? I think that's fair. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's uh, it's fascinating because we're kind of we're more culture based than we are activist based. <laughs> but I would consider that activism in, in Manchester, itself. right? But we're filming but it, it yeah, so it's, filming, it's activism. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you know, if you cop lock and no one films it, did it actually happen? Whoa. How can you cop lock without some type of filming? Just standing there. Whoa. <laughs> well, you may film it, but if you don't upload it to YouTube or anywhere else, Whoa. what's the point of it? That's hold on now. That's Uploading is a whole other step. That's man. introducing a wedge into this yeah. f- no, philosophy. I don't understand. Hold on. That's that's a whole other step. Is you, uploading, sharing information. Yeah, is, you, uh, is that's a, not over step. I think I think just filming is, as activism. I don't yeah. think I have to share it to be for it to be activism. But now that ha- we talked about Manchester and everything, did, I might uh, explain why I came to Manchester, not somewhere else. Yeah, man. All right. Well, when we get back, when we get back, I yeah. want to know why you decided that Manch Vegas is where you want to spend your life at, where you move to. Okay. No, this is the international side for heavy lighter right there. I had to think about. I don't smoke. I know. Like that. That's why I'm saying this out loud. <laughs> I've been drinking. Yeah, Me too. <laughs> <laughs> the, the next section. You want to be on the like, camera for this? Monopolize. No, it's okay. I am on the camera for this. What are you talking about? I just put you on the camera. I didn't let I you talk the about the the, um, the second talk you gave at Liberty Forum. Oh, we were true. talking all about the first one. Though. That's true. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Did either of you <laughs> see my yes, talks? Yes, newbie sixty six. I I'm answering your goofy mm-hmm. questions. During I did breaks. two talks at Liberty Forum. Did you see either <laughs> one of mine? Either one of you? Sorry. You really? You should have seen the first one. The first. And the polyamory one. Yep. I did a talk Sorry. on secession, and I did a talk on polyamory. That's awesome. Sorry. I'll watch. I'll watch the secession. The poly well, one the exactly. was so much better than the secession there were layers to that one okay. it was deep layers okay how long is the video balls deep like 25 minutes 30 minutes nice how much of it is rum i i I, 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 I got my I, I got at least half of that was just me i gotta get that footage out too. yeah please do i don't really, yeah i have footage do. of my whole thing out is, is the one that i did out or is that bamboozer or I have. It. I was. I have it. Oh, stuff okay. that I was at Liberty Forum, the New Hampshire Liberty Party Convention. Rob was there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Huge and, and, and who did I represent? The New Hampshire uh, Independence. The Foundation. Foundation for New Hampshire Independence, okay. which we're going to talk about at some point before we end the show. Text. I literally have not talked about that last week. I didn't talk about that this week. And the whole reason I brought Liberty Forum was for me to talk about it, and somehow we keep getting sidetracked. So, thank you. I do need to talk about it because I kind of yeah. want to say, like, hey, I'm you know I'm a representative of it. You don't know. I don't think they really want me talking about it on air, but I don't really care. 
<laughs> like I can't like talk about the fact that I blog for free key or I do cop blocking. It's like it's very like it's like always like being a politician and being undercover. <laughs> like seriously, I almost kind of. It's weird. We ran into a politician today. Wow, so many man. man, a state representative, one of the four hundred. Oh, Derek J, we love you, man. Derek J, right here, and get on our show. I would love to have Derek J. You on you have an open ASAP. seat. You have an open seat on this show anytime you. Uh, Except please. for next week. Except for next week, <laughs> or the fourteenth, or the fourteenth of April. Because the fourteenth of April is going to be fucking badass. Yes. I'm not going to say who it is yet. We've got wow. some guests lined up for the future that are very exciting. Wow. We're all see. This is a never-ending activism. Every week, we're like booking guests. Sometimes last minute, which is usually last minute, but we're always like <laughs> it, it never ends. It just continually yeah. goes over and over and over again, trying to find guests, topics. Like we're always wow. throwing ideas at each other about what to talk about. <laughs> oh man! Yeah, well, you chose to do a weekly. That's show, what's up, so. man. Well, it's going to actually go. It's going to go down to three, three times a month. Oh, Not should a, we talk about that on the yeah. show? I feel bad. That was the sound of my phone dying. Oh. I'm now stranded. I'm marooned. <laughs> well, without access to Fedbook. Dude, if you don't film it, <laughs> I can't prove activism. Anymore. I don't. <laughs> oh. Oh. I don't have signal. I have a phone, but no. No 3G, nothing. No data and no signal. No. Well, at least you have like a because calculator my... and like yeah, exactly. notepad maybe. <laughs> yeah, notepad. We'll Vince... we watch. Nice. A lot of G watch Gillian? Exactly. Vince... My, my plan oh. expired. On That's a guy Sunday. from uh, Breaking yeah. Bad. And so I'm probably buying some, some plan from someone sitting around this table. Yeah, right. But well, I can I can definitely hook you up. I'll have to look up a picture of him. I don't, I don't know if I remember <laughs> what it looks like. Right? I don't deal with carriers. <laughs> We're coming. We should be coming up right after this. Yeah. All right. So I want to. I want to go back to like the touch on uh, foundation for New Hampshire independence. And okay. We'll and then you want to go into the other. Welcome back to the Rebel Love Show. And a uh, little bit about Liberty Forum really quick. Uh, a few things happen over there. Uh, if you ever get a chance, if it ever ends up on the internet, which uh, one of them hopefully will, <laughs> in one form or another. Okay. And now, granted, I, I, I will acknowledge that I am notorious for not Can releasing footage the, expediently. He, releasing footage? You don't release footage. He, I, he runs on Libertarian Time. I have no. He runs on Shire I, Dude time, which is a whole. It's like it's like taking Shire time and multiplying it by like it ten, out. and then adding like an Eskimo family tree on top of it. <laughs> That's what his time. I is have. Like. Did you watch Interstellar, shows. the movie? I have not seen that. Yet. Interstellar. Yeah, yeah, it was le the end of last year, and it has this movies. Yeah, oh, time nice. dilation thing. Yeah, yeah that was it. really cool. I yeah, really enjoyed really that cool. part and of it. Has time dilation. Time dilation yeah. does happen here. Let me tell you something. When I, I keep making this joke about much, Shire Time. Much over the number yeah, these guys yeah. are pro-pot. Did you hear that? <laughs> <laughs> Talk about time dilation. <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah. Dilation. We're also pro-coffee to compensate, man. It speeds it back up. <laughs> like That's why we're both. It's like it, it, it levels the playing field yeah. out a little bit. Balance. Yeah. Anywho, <laughs> Liberty Forum... Uh, I did two talks. Two talks. Uh, the first one was a hell of a lot better than the second one. I got that one on film. The I know. first one. The second one was more important to me, but it wasn't as good, to be perfectly honest. Uh, I did a talk with the artist formerly known as Old Girl, or I think she's now known. <laughs> she's now known as Old Girl. I don't again? know. Again, I can't keep track. Maybe is she doing it again? I think she's still doing it. I, I don't thought know. after I'm the not, intervention, we're not in communication anymore, man. I don't know. Well, you could say she was formerly, formerly known as Oak Girl. That, <laughs> oh. that would be true. Just add formerlys from now on. I'm just going with the artist. I don't know, like I stop, stop, freaking. Like yeah. <laughs> well, you know, or stop girl, Dover. Girl. Stop free Dover. Yeah, hey stop guys, free Dover. If you're watching this right now, uh, go join Stop Free Dover on Facebook. Please do. Please do. <laughs> we need to stop those pesky uh, libertarians. Those taking goddamn over free staters. Dover, New Hampshire. Free Dover. Yeah. Wow. Or making it free. Yeah. Anyways, uh, 
if you get a chance, if Shire Dude ever actually releases this inform this uh, video, uh, which will probably, I know he's going to, but I, I'd rather have the raw video flirt first, which he's not going to do because he's Shire Dude. Never. I never release raw footage. Anyways, we did talk on polyamory, which was, it was a fascinating thing because me and her have not talked in like a month. And like I was hoping she wouldn't show up to it. So I actually planned out my entire talk as if she didn't show up. And she showed up. And what was crazy is we went, we were doing a live show from three to five o'clock. And we had uh, um, Jeffrey Tucker and uh, we also had Davi Barker on at the same time. Great which show. I have, I have not released that episode yet. Thanks, man. And the problem with that is, uh, you know, when you're recording on site, you know, things go wrong. And right. My mic was actually wrong. Now, mind you, I was using Ian's equipment. But uh, it's okay. <laughs> um, he, le- I can't really be mad at that. So, but uh, anyways, for some reason, my mic was all messed up, and I gotta fix that audio. Hopefully, I fix it. I will. But I'm a slacktivist. You'll probably, I'll probably release that in like a month. Because gosh, I'm, Rob, not releasing stuff on time. You know, I'm trying to live my life here, man. This show takes up so much of my time, and I work a full time show. Day job. I work a day job. Mind people. you, people, people listening on YouTube, show, show one. I have three. Go on. You have three. I have three when shows. <laughs> they're all equally you know <laughs> dynamic and weird yes it keeps it fresh that's true thanks buddy your episode of it's like this too was was epic by the way oh my gosh oh man the mvg episode of it's like this too was phenomenal yeah it gave me yeah. chills <laughs> <laughs> we no, watched it together and mateus was just like oh <laughs> yeah no yeah. i it gave me chills you know just you know first of all just kind of seeing myself in another video is weird it was the best hearing was, things that i thought were like it was oh, the, hell yeah. It's like, wait a minute. It was the me. best that's like this too I've seen yet. By Thanks, far. man. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. That's an honor. So anyways, we hadn't talked in weeks. All right. And I'm yeah. literally... You and O-Girl. Uh, We're back fu- to you and yes. O-Girl. And yeah. what's, okay. what's funny... Well, I'm trying to like keep the show somewhat on target because like, I opened up the segment with it. Forget about it. Come I on. know, right? Yeah. It, it's it's all the pot. Um, anywho. So we hadn't talked in weeks. And we, I, I literally leave this show that I do with these two, uh, with Davi Barker and uh, Jeffrey Turner. Gross Shire. Somehow Shire Dude made it there before me and was filming. I don't know how you even got there. It's like you teleported from like the media room to that room. Like, I don't know how you beat me there, but somehow you did. I'm fast. I know. Um, <laughs> Shire speed. And so anyways, like <laughs> we, I walk in and like, I literally, she's already talking. So I literally just walk all the way straight up and like grab, the, basically grab the mic. And it was literally, uh, we had to share a mic. So it, it was kind of aggravating because we both had to like grab the mic from each other. And I was trying yeah. to be like polite, like, oh, I got my word in. Here's, here's the mic back and blah, blah, blah. Um, it was a fascinating talk, I'll be honest. It was very, very fascinating. Um, I thought it went actually really well. Um, it will be on the internet. Where can people find that? Yeah, Shire Dude, where can people find that? Um, it's going to be right front center of uh, ShireDude.com. If you go to the ShireDude YouTube page, though, that's a better bet. I'm going to release um, your polyamory talk. I've also got um, I've got MVG, right? What was uh, what did that film? Um, you? you don't even know. The first one was the Crypto Anarchy talk. Did you film my the Crypto second Anarchy talk? talk? Did you film my Alt Expo talk? No, I wasn't there for that. Cool. Well, no, I know <laughs> I that. Know, uh, I guess it's cool. Be one of them. Granted, That's okay. We were doing 420 rallies at Liberty Forum. Hey, I, and I was just, you know, <laughs> you and you, drinking. Hey, when, you don't have to when apologize. Rich Paul, when Rich Paul says, hey, Nick let's go it. smoke. You go smoke. You go smoke. Yeah. Damn it. Well, you know? It's as close to our, yeah, as close to an order as you're going to get. Yeah. Yeah. And then I also filmed uh, Darren Tapp's um, thing about school, which... Uh, or his version of school, which is fascinating. Cool. Uh, and it'll be edited. It'll be up. Give it, I don't know, two weeks. So, oh, guys, I've got a question for our new mover. Yeah. Yes. Mm. So what made you pick Manchester out of all oh. the places? Oh, yes. We were yes. going to come back to that. Right, right. Yeah, and I didn't want to bring the savage. Thank you. Um, well, before coming here, obviously, I tried to do some some studying about the, the project and the places. I, I had watched, in fact, I translated the 101 Reasons, the documentary. Wow. I, I translated it into Portuguese. And I, I, I had this, this idea, perhaps the stereotypes, I don't know how, how real they are yet, but keen is the, like the in-your-face thing, like activism, mm. more, more anarchist, more uh, directly against the state. Sure. And I wanted to go there as well, it was one one option, but I figured that would get me arrested at some point, mm. which I don't want to be. Who does? You are dark skinned compared to a lot of the people that reside in Keene. I'll tell you that. Yeah, 
and so are you, that, Rob? And not American. I'm, I'm dark skinned compared, and to, to, compared, compared yeah. to Shire, dude. I am. Yeah, and not American. That's the that's the thing. God, you are pale. <laughs> and I'm <laughs> paleo. <laughs> Go on. I sometimes I, I emphasize this of not being an American, not because I care, but they care. They right. You know they care. Right. Uh, right. What's it called? So, uh, DWB is driving while brown. <laughs> people get those all the time yeah yeah and so i didn't want to get arrested i i crossed out keen um conquered i see that i don't think that's they're all their activism but they are the capital so they have more like political within the political process and everything and although i, I like that I, I have been trying to work with the liberty alliance like reviewing bills and everything yeah, i yeah, think that's yeah. important but i didn't want to focus exclusively on that uh, Nashua, I don't know why I crossed it out. And Portsmouth, it was because I heard it was too expensive, but it was my second option. But then I opted for, for Manchester because I thought, like, there would be probably a mix of all of Right. Man, of man, it's man. got its own unique culture as well. Oh. <laughs> it is a mix of that, but it's... it's yeah. A, yeah. It's yeah. like the most, the most porcupines... Then yeah, the highest concentration yeah, of high concentration. Well, Manch is kind of like a hub for a lot of new movers. Like I've seen people come and go since I've been here, and I haven't been here that long. And you'll see people, they pretty much use Manch as like a, a jump-off point to, to really discover the lay of land of where they really fit in, whether it's Lakes Region, the Free Coast, or yeah, Keen, Upper Valley. Or Upper Valley yeah, anywhere it's central. Like yeah. It's right? central, yeah. And then I, I was coming from like a huge city. Like I, I lived in Sao Paulo, which is like 18 million people. Like mm -hmm. more, more than the whole of New England. Yeah. So I wanted to be in the biggest city or the least small city. So here I am in Manchester. Welcome to the big city, Man <laughs> Vegas. <laughs> yeah, this, this uh, ain't that big. I, I feel what you're saying. I'm from Chicago. <laughs> Eight million some plus people. And yeah, it's not even close to that. <laughs> but I still love it here. And we'll be back with uh, Top of the Hour with a little bit more. Welcome back to the Rebel Love Show. And uh, so Liberty Forum, I did another talk besides polyamory, which was a better talk. But nonetheless, if you're, if you're at this other one, I did a talk on secession. Uh, now, cool thing with that talk, uh, right before, literally like the day before, like at, Li at Liberty Forum, uh, I became a board member for the Foundation for New Hampshire Independence, uh, which is kind of uh, fascinating because I get to the kind of play politics a little bit you know what i'm saying did yeah. you take a shower afterwards uh, <laughs> you know it's fascinating though like okay so the whole thing the, the, you know the foundation which, which is great it's for uh um new hampshire becoming its own separate state and you know i put my minarchist hat on for that for the simple fact that if i rid of 80 percent of the tyranny in my life i'll support it you know what i'm saying so I'm a supporter of it. I, I want to see it succeed. Uh, I know we're going to try and plan a uh, some sort of uh, outreach event coming up before Pork Fest. Hopefully, uh, I got, I'm probably going to try and organize something like that tomorrow. Uh, we're going to call it a Brew and Sedition event, which is pretty cool. Uh, but uh, we haven't, uh, you know, we're going to get that done soon. Uh, but no, it's a it's an honor to be a part of that. I moved here because that's one of the uh, ideas I'm a very huge supporter of. Because um, no supporter of the federal government in any way, shape, or form. Not that I am with any government, but at least with the federal government. If I can get that off my back, that's the majority of the tyranny in my life. Um, what do you guys, real fast, what do you guys think are the odds of New Hampshire seceding in our lifetime? No, declaring independence, sir. <laughs> declaring independence. <laughs> seceding is a dirty word. Just I'm going to say it anyway. Session, no. uh, Slim to none. Slim, Slim to none. To none. Okay. okay. Well, no, no, no. Sorry. Let me throw it. Let me throw in one more. Then, what's the odds of you having liberty in your lifetime? The same. So why are you here? Because it's better than none. <laughs> there's there's this limb there. Slim. Um, I yeah. think there's a healthy opportunity. And in Brazil, for it. it's he, he is better than Brazil. Like, I, I we mentioned the the constitution before, and uh -huh. even though it's like 
It's very complicated to say the, comp the Constitution has any meaning, any practical meaning. It's a right. goddamn piece of paper. Exactly, it but it's still better than what we have in Brazil. Okay. The, That's here, dark. Here, <laughs> yeah, here the, Constitution, <laughs> here the Constitution does not mandate soci socialism. There it does. It's not explicit, but it does. Well, like for me, like I think Mateus is about to say this if I'm wrong, but there is still hope here. You know, with this many people that you know have the same uh, philosophical backing for the most part, even the, uh, you know, you'll go after the minarchists. You, you're notorious for going after the minarchists. Yeah, they're kind of like um, if I'm like a house cat and they're like the lizards that are just like <laughs> run around and I get to chase them and maybe cut off their tails a little bit and like they're, they're I don't know I, um, I I kind of spoke out against. Uh, politics and the idea of limited government um, at Liberty Forum at the Alt Expo. Mm -hmm. um, that was that was a good discussion. It got it got cut kind of deep. It got it was it was not safe for work. Um, it was it was a it was an adult conversation, and I hope that I had hopefully not offended anybody in the audience. Um, but given that it was Alt Expo at Liberty Forum right. in New Hampshire, I thought the odds were pretty low. Yeah. Um, no, I'll give you that. But I think honestly that the New Hampshire chance for uh, independence, um, as much as all the work that we're going to do here, I think what's going to push it in that direction much more is just going to be the federal government, kind of like ballooning and then collapsing in on itself, kind of. And it's going to, you know, I think that that states will break off like the Soviet Union, like the satellite nations yeah. kind of broke off, and eventually it's like, oh, seven months later, this state just became its own sovereign nation, and nine months later you know, Azerbaijan or whatever became its own. It's like, that's going to start happening to the 50 states of America and whether New Hampshire, you know, leads that or is in the middle of that or, is, you know, wherever it stacks up with the other states kind of abandoning it, I think that will play probably a larger role than what, we, than what we're doing. Although we can um, steer it in a direction that means it doesn't repeat itself. Absolutely. We can, we can, we can be careful stewards of the way that its future is kind of carried forward from that point. See, one thing I love here is like when you talk to locals, like even locals here, locals love New Hampshire. Yeah. You know, they have like a regional identity to being living in New Hampshire. Like you'll yeah. run into locals that have tattoos of New Hampshire on them. Yeah. You know, like people here that love this state. Um, it's not out of the realm of possibility to, you know, if if this state's broke up to at least I mean, the whole idea for me is like just push the idea. Like right now, we're 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 trying to walk the walk. Like all of us here, we're walking the walk. We're, in all honesty, I feel like most of the people in the FSP, the FSP, the fact that FSP exists, maybe it's ahead of its time. Maybe it's before its time. I don't know. I like to think it's is of the time, uh, personally. But nonetheless, you know, we're we're you know we're level ten, and a lot of people are like level one or two. But we're no, we're never going to move that needle. We're never going to like raise that awareness by just not doing anything. So I mean, yeah, we. I may be. I'm pushing for you know uh, independence for New Hampshire. Will they have in my lifetime? I sure damn hope so. But you know, at least I can sleep at night knowing that I'm doing something. I'm trying to get something, you know, to change the world, like be the change you want to be. You're, at least you're, I, you're taking action. Yeah, yeah. And there's something I think I, I thought about that uh, with the secession movements in Brazil. We have some, especially the the southern southernmost part of the country, which is uh, the heaviest uh, European immigration. So they have sort of a distinct identity, and one thing I I think is also uh, also applies here is that secession movements, for ironic that is, ironic as that is, we should unite or ally with secession movements everywhere. We we are like we are libertarians, so we should probably like seek other libertarian secessionist movements but there should be like a, a broad i think a broad movement yeah, see, for secession. just the idea of secession regardless of what type yeah. of is it libertarian the, or peaceful or is it whatever but the the it's a common enemy yeah. we, we talked about common enemies well, well, see what's kind of interesting is a lot of the uh, vermont vermont has a uh, a strong um opinion on secession there's a lot of people that support secession most of those people that do are leftists yeah. To my knowledge, they're sure. not they're right. not libertarians. Right. They still they still have the same agreement when it comes to the federal government in regards to the tyrannical gov uh, federal government. But they're all for like local you know socialism. Yeah, right. They're not opposed to um, a monopoly provider, you know, a state institution on principle. They're opposed to this kind of political compact they happen to find themselves in right now. Yeah. It's like, well, yeah. let's just form that and then we'll just go right around to make a new one with the place we're already been living. Yeah. yeah. And it's I think it's good because uh, to foster like this this idea, the the union isn't perpetual, it isn't like immutable, it isn't natural. It's just like we can revoke that. 
Right. And I think in America, people move around more easily than I probably anywhere else in, in the world. Like people move for college and everything, even apart from us, I mean. Generally, people move oh, around. No, yeah, so, I, I always... so people don't, don't need to have that identity. Oh, I want New mm-hmm. Hampshire to be independent. I want wherever I am to be independent. <laughs> yeah, man. I mean... No, no, I, I hear you on that. And, um, yeah, the trick is to sell them on secession and then from, from the union, and then maybe you can sell them on a, a lower secession and then a lower secession, and right. then finally it's the secession of the individual. Yeah, at some point yeah. there's just going to be little cities or little tiny towns that are just like, oh, forget yeah, They're this. talking See, about divide, dividing California into six states. Right, yeah, Tim Draper, the guy who got um, the Silk Road Bitcoins. I don't know yeah. if you connected that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he's the know guy... That. Who, yeah, he, he won the uh, auction and got all the Silk Road Bitcoins. 30000 or something, yeah. And I, yes. think, I think they could do like, I, w- I always thought they could do something like this. They divide the state for state purposes only. Mm-hmm. Like they still have, still have two U.S. senators. They still have like 50-something yeah. uh, U.S. representatives. From the point of view of the federal government, there's they still one state. Mm-hmm. But within that state, there's, there are six separate states hmm. with six separate legislatures. And they can, you can do that. You can do that with, with laws. I would. It's yeah. not. It's not I impossible. I, don't know really I wouldn't mind there. not having more California senators. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well. Well, they can just see. They should see those. Those. That's not really secession. It's just breaking up another state into a state. Sure. Sure. State. It's not really a like huge. I guess it's part partially secession, but it's just from a, a smaller group. That's big. Like that's actually. Group. It'd be pretty huge Maybe if, it would if be California huge. split into six. Um, I know the top. The the very top portion of it was going to be called Jefferson in the six states proposal. Oh, been, there's. People that have been pushing Jefferson, Jefferson for like 20, 30 years at least. Yeah, I think yeah. some of them want to join a uh, part of Oregon yeah. and everything. Right. right. And this has this thing all over the world. So you see uh, people in Spain, um, right? The um, Basque people or the, um, Catalan- the Catalonians. Yeah. yeah. They all want their own little kind of, they have their own kind of unique linguistic tradition or ethnic tradition or cultural tradition and and then you, you have the Scottish which had a, a referendum official formal they, they would have in the pen they, 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 they would have officially begged for permission I know <laughs> but <laughs> they didn't even <laughs> get that far at least it was ex- socially acceptable for them to beg for they, permission no, but and that's a permission step was in the right direction absolutely but permission was granted before they asked for it like if, if they had voted yes it was a, a done deal really you know? Yeah. yeah, it was a done deal. <laughs> Anywho, they uh, would become independent. Period. All right, Mateus, really quick, where can people find you? Oh, find me on Facebook. Find me on Instagram. Instagram is my cooking. He's quite the chef, people. And on our sort of fun. You cook. should Google Mateus von Gutenberg. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's very easy to spell. You want everybody to find you real quick. Bruno Parga on Facebook. Shiredude. Shiredude.com. Rebelovshow.com. Check it out.